I'm Dan St. Ives, and for today's episode of Talking With, my guest is actor Richard Karn. Instantly recognizable from TV roles. <laughs> Al Instantly. Instantly. Uh, home Improvement, uh, the Enduring Game Show Family Feud, and uh, movies, live theater, anything you haven't done? Uh, let's see. Um, I haven't done a radio show. Well, <laughs> something to uh, uh, something to, to aspire to. Yeah, I know. You're here today in uh, Calgary, and for the next few months, for a show called Game Show, and you have a history of game shows. So I thought uh, we might try a little something called uh, Internet Fact or Fiction. Richard <laughs> <Carr>. <laughs> Internet Fact or Fiction. Okay, <laughs> it's my <laughs> favorite subject. <laughs> there, there's all sorts of information online, and you never know if it's true. So. Who better to go to than the source? So are you game? Uh, no, I'm not game. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> okay, fact or fiction. You worked as an apartment building manager prior to your success on Home Improvement, and you maintained that job during the show's first season until you knew Home Improvement would be successful. Uh, partially right. I was. I was an apartment manager, which was what a great job. I mean, you get your free rent, and you have time to go out on auditions and things, but I only kept it through like half of the first season. I, I, after a while, you know, once the air, once the show started to air, I would get like these phone calls from people. Uh, our our sink is, is is all stopped up, so I'd go down there and take a look, and there'd be fifteen people in their apartment. And I go, you see, I told you Al was our apartment manager, you know, and I thought, okay, maybe maybe uh, my day job is is uh, secure now. Fact or fiction? The most common interview questions involve flannel, lumberjack shirts, or goatee grooming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, flannel um, and and goatee grooming. Well, well, well you know, I went, to the go I went to the goatee after the first season of Family Feud. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, I couldn't bring myself That's great. To, to shave it all the way off, and they wouldn't let me shave it down the first season because they really wanted to have. Well, you know, we just want to make sure people recognize you. I go, oh yeah, okay. Interesting. I never put the connection in. Now that you say that, I have a flash of uh, your beard from the yeah. From home program. Yeah, and I didn't. You know, I, I had that beard because I was like lazy when I had the audition, and I wasn't originally cast. And the executive producer Carmen Finestra calls me up and goes, uh, "Richard, you still got that beard?" And I go, "Yeah, I do." I said, "Well, great, because we want you for the first. Uh, you know, we want you to do the pilot." And I went, "Really? Really? The pilot?" And we called you because we know you're a good guy, and, and we only want you for the pilot. If it gets picked up, we're bringing in this other guy we cast. <laughs> and I went, oh, you know, that's okay, because I'm just, you know, damn glad to have a job. And it worked out rather and well. And it worked out, yeah. Do you get a lot of people commenting on flannel shirts and lumberjack outfits? Not as much as, as I used to. Uh, you know, flannel, obviously. And it was during the 90s, you know, yeah. the, the grunge look from Seattle. <laughs> I, was, I was the personification of that. Uh, and... and yeah, you know, the first couple of episodes, uh, um, Valerie, our, co our customer, uh, got me these, these plaid shirts and they were like Ralph Lauren. And they were expensive plaid shirts and they didn't necessarily fit as well or they weren't as comfortable as like these $20, you know, plaid shirts from, from everywhere else. So, yeah, you know, they save money on me. <laughs> oh, I don't go there, you know, I'm perfectly happy with this. Man. It's, it's interesting to know what is going to stick when you give something a, a test drive. And I know. There it is. I know. <laughs> and they, you know, you know, that was just by chance because the other guy, they weren't going to necessarily put him in plaid. Yeah, you know, he was, he was going to be an older character actor, um, somebody that Tim could look up to and, and, and have a little, you know, gravis there and, and also higher, taller. Kidding aside about the stereotypical things that people remember about shows, you've been so fortunate to break free from, I mean, how long was uh, eight seasons for Home Eight Christmas? seasons, but we were finished in 99. Yeah. So it's been, what, 14 years? Yeah. Yeah. But you haven't suffered from any type of typecast and you segued into game shows. Well, you know, I'm sure there there was, um, because I also I did a lot of, of representing of companies, which, um, you know, is something I made a decision. I, I said, well, this is probably going to take me out of like really major league, yeah, you know, professional um, motion pictures, the high end stuff, and I, it, maybe it did, maybe it didn't, but um, I made a decision. I'm happy. Yeah. 
and still had to have some uh, a foot in the door for movies right. and a lot of. Uh, and I put my son through college. Yep, <laughs> that's always the main thing. Yeah. Factor Fiction, you booked your first national TV commercial a week after moving to New York City. This is going back a few wow. years. And that's, that's on the internet? That's on the internet. Dang. Don't, <laughs> this, this is a lesson you don't do anything that you're going to be ashamed of 40 years later. <laughs> well, maybe not 40. I was going to say, I think it was 70 something, but it appeared in a Super Bowl uh, during a Super Bowl broadcast. It did. It was the first one in 1980. Holy mackerel. 1980, and it was, my, it was my first week, it was my second commercial audition. And I got this commercial, and it was great, and it was, I was like, wow, this is easy. I'm, I'm loving this, uh, you know, and, I, and, and it took a full day to do a 30 second commercial. A full day, and I'm thinking, really? Wow, you know, it was two separate setups, outside and then also in a, in a bar. And everything, and yeah, it played the first commercial. But I, I don't know if that was before they made such a big deal about the Super Bowl commercials or not. But um, it played the first one. Yeah. Last one, fact or fiction? You found your agent while attending a traffic safety course. Uh, okay. <laughs> Again, that's a partial truth. I, I went to traffic court. Uh, I was guilty. I, I was doing a show. Um, at the First Baptist Church of Beverly Hills, probably the only Baptist Church in Beverly Hills, but uh, on the way home from doing the Scottish play, you know, um, Shakespeare's Scottish play, which has a lot of bad luck, supposed to be, um, because there's witches' incantations and things like that. Mm -hmm. So my bad luck was rolling through a stop sign on my way home, and, and I got pulled over, and, and so that my insurance wouldn't go up, I went to traffic school eight hours of traffic school and I happened to sit next to this woman who turned out to be an agent. And over the eight hours we, you know, talked about who we knew in the business and, oh, by the way, I don't have a, a, an agent. She's, well, <laughs> that's too bad for you. And, and uh, you know, I finally got around to these guys that I had met years before in Indiana and they go, oh, you know, they're doing a pilot. That's how I found out about home improvement. So I called them up and say, hey, you guys are doing something. Go, yeah, I know, Rick, and we thought about you, but we're going a totally different way. The neighbor is already cast, he's way older, and Tim's assistant is older, and he's already cast. But come in, you know, and audition and everything like that. So I get the job, I get the pilot, not the full job. And I call this lady up, and I go, hey, you know, um, I got that, that job we were talking about. If uh, I don't know if you guys would like to represent me, and she goes, you know, <laughs> we really have a lot of your type. And I go, oh, okay, all right. So I found someone else. And years later, they regretted that decision. So what do you presume when they say we've got a lot of your type? Is it just male Caucasian? <laughs> just, you know, guys like me, I guess. And, and in a way, I, you know, I know this now. I didn't necessarily think of the full ramifications of it then. But if you have four or five guys that are all kind of up for the same role, you don't want to have more than that because then you've got huge competition within your own clients. Yeah, and I guess it is like anything else, it's a finite amount. There's a, of all the people that are acting, singing, dancing, yeah. there's a very small percentage. Well, I go into a room now and it's like, oh my gosh, it's every face I know and I've grown up with or I've seen, and it can go all the way from like French Stewart to, uh, um, I, I'm trying to think of Norm. Mm -hmm. From Cheers, yeah, you know it's like huge age range and diversity, and I'm kind of lumped in with all these faces. Interesting. So you could end up playing virtually anything. It, it cares sometimes, about yeah. Now on that, uh, I, I found it kind of interesting to think that with everything that you've been doing uh, and having been on Broadway and stuff, did. Do you have any musical talents that we're not aware of, or that I'm not aware of? I, I'm, I'm not even aware of it. I, <laughs> actually, I did a musical last year on stage, no which kidding. was a lot of fun, and I was very nervous about it. Um, I did 25th Annual Putnam County Spelling. Right, yeah. Uh, but I, that role didn't require a lot of singing. It was a lot of singing with everybody. So not a lot of, you know, not solos and things like that. My wife is really the singer. She's the one that, you know, we met doing a play, um, a non-musical, and she had done like three or four Broadway musicals before. She's got a great voice. And I kind of, uh, I, I, you know, I respect the audience enough to know 
that if they're going to go see a musical, they don't want to hear me singing. They want to hear somebody that really, you know, can do it. And you've recently, I read in the Playbill, which I didn't find online, uh, you recently appeared in a Broadway play. Or, uh, Broadway or Broadway? Oh, years ago. Okay. Years ago, I was in Me and My Girl on Broadway. Oh, okay. Which they're bringing that back. No kidding. With the guy from Homeland. The terrorist. Oh my god. From Homeland. Apparently he can sing. Yes. But Robert Lindsay and I, uh, we did that together. It was a great role. I played a suit of armor. <laughs> yes. A suit of armor that gets pushed over and you think it's going to like collapse and fall over. And then it catches itself at the last second. Only one to get a laugh. All the guys they replaced me with never got a laugh. Oh my god. Yes, that's right. So even in a suit of armor, I'm funny. I could agree with that 100%. <laughs> so the show here in Calgary, right now that you're appearing, Game Show, I, Game show. I thank you so much for uh, agreeing to spend a few minutes in between two shows today. I oh, uh, can't say thanks enough, and uh, if you're able to, come in and check it out while it's raining here in Calgary. Thank you.